Good morning, girls and boys. It is Wednesday, the 9th of September, and we are going to be doing some math. And first, I wanted to review our homework from last night. Now, our homework was just to read, okay? So I'm just, I just want to make sure that we all know how to pronounce all of these words. So I'm just going to read this story for you to make sure we've all read it and to help you out with any pronunciation you may have. Do not worry about the questions at the end. We are going to cover that today in class. All right, so here's our homework. This is called The Closet Creature, and it's by Kelly Hashway. She is the author. All right, so The Closet Creature. Bump, bump, scratch. Adam opened his eyes and pulled the covers up to his chin. He stared around the room, searching the darkness for that thing that was making those scary sounds. The closet door moved as something banged on it from inside. Who's there? Adam asked in a shaky voice. The closet slowly began to open. Adam jumped out of bed and ran to the closet door, slamming it shut with his palms. He grabbed his desk chair and propped it against the door handle. Then he ran out of his room and down the hall. His brother's door was wide open and Adam jumped into David's bed. Adam, David asked in a groggy voice, what are you doing in here? Adam tugged on David's arm. There's something in my closet. You probably had a bad dream. Go back to bed. Adam yanked the blankets off the bed. It wasn't a dream. I was awake and the closet door started opening by itself. David sighed, fine. But when we don't find anything, you have to promise to leave me alone for the rest of the night. Adam nodded. David reached into his desk drawer and pulled out a flashlight. Then they headed to Adam's room. Adam stopped in the doorway. He could hear something scratching his closet door. Do you hear that? Adam asked. David nodded. He walked over to Adam's bed and pulled the case off one of the pillows. He opened the pillowcase. You open the door very slowly and I'll grab whatever it is. Adam slid the chair to the side and pulled the closet door open a crack. Something banged against the door trying to force it open. Adam took a deep breath and opened the door a few more inches. A small furry creature ran right into the pillowcase. I got it, David said, closing the pillowcase and holding it in the air. What is it? Adam moved closer as David peeked inside. David put the pillowcase on the bed and an orange cat climbed out. David scooped the cat up. Apricot? How did you get trapped in my closet? David laughed. Ha, <laughs> the poor cat. If I was locked in your closet with your stinky shoes, I'd be banging on the door to get out too. Poor apricot, Adam said. You were probably more scared than I was. All right, so that's our story. That was our homework you just had to read. And like I said before, do not worry about these questions. Uh, just make sure you understand the story and you can rewind this video if you want to reread the story, if you need any help. All right, and we are gonna answer these questions in class today, so don't worry about that. The next thing I wanna do is some math. Let me pull that up for you. All right, so here's our math. We are going to be on page 23 in your math pupils book, which is the blue one. All right, and this is all about rounding and estimation. So if you don't know what that is, stay tuned. I'm going to teach you all about it. It says, rounding to the nearest 10, 100, and 1,000. Before you learn, Julie 
needed 196 centimeters of cloth for her project. Should she buy 100 centimeters or 200 centimeters of cloth? Hmm. How can we figure this out? Use a chart to show how Julie could decide. All right. So if you can use like a number line to help you figure that out, uh, that would be good. All right. This is what we mean by rounding. If you realize on a number line that 196 is much closer to 200 than 100, that will tell you how much cloth to buy, okay? And if you can't figure that out, don't worry about it. We are going to learn all about it right now. All right, so this is what we call rounding. Many times, uh, we don't need an exact amount. We want to round, okay? It makes it easy us, easier on us and our brains to think about things if they are nice round numbers, okay? And round, meaning like a circle, these are numbers that end in zero here, okay? Like 40 or 50 or 100 or 1,000. So uh, it says round to the nearest 10. First, we are going to learn how to round to 10. Round 42 to the nearest 10, all right? 42 is between 40 and 50. It is nearer to 40 than to 50, all right? And we can see here on the number line that it's only two steps away from the number 40, and it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steps away from the number 50, okay? So if we were rounding, we would round down to 40 here. Very close. 42 is 40 when rounded to the nearest 10, okay? This is how we round to the nearest 10. We can all count by 10s, yeah? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, all right? And you can keep going up and up. 42 is approximately equal to 40. Now, this nice big word, approximately, means it is not exactly 40, but it is very near to 40, okay? And that's what this little symbol means here. This does not mean equal. It means eh, it's about equal, okay? It is approximately 40, okay? Let's keep going. Number two, a mobile phone weighs 157 grams, all right? 157 is between 150 and 160. It is nearer to 160 than to 150. So, 157 is 160 when rounded to the nearest 10 grams, okay? So once again here, uh, 157 is only three steps from 160, and it is not very near to 150 down here. If we're rounding to the nearest 10, we want to round up, okay? It is approximately 160, all right, which is what this symbol means here. The mobile phone weighs 160 grams when its mass is rounded to the nearest 10 grams, okay? And once again, we are just rounding to the nearest 10, okay? We can all count by tens if you keep going up from 100 as well. 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, okay? And as we can see here on our number line, 157, is closest to the 10 of 160. So that's why we're rounding it to 160. All right, let's keep going. A plane covered a distance of 1,095 kilometers. 1,095 is exactly halfway between 190 and 1,100. Hmm. So, 1,095 is 1,100 when rounded to the nearest 10 kilometers. And even though it's right in the middle there, I'll tell you why we're rounding up. Because a long, long time ago, some scientists and mathematicians got together and decided that any time we have a digit five, we are going to round up, okay? When the digit five is in the ones place, we round up. This is a smart girl here. Okay. All right. Yes. Uh, anytime you see five, we are going to round up. Why? Because all of these smart people have told us and have made an agreement a long, long time ago that 
when we have the digit five, we are going to round up. All right, the distance covered by the plane is approximately 1,100 kilometers, or I'm sorry, 1,100 kilometers, when rounded to the nearest 10 kilometers, all right? So this is how we round to tens. Now we can also, we're dealing with bigger numbers, we can round to the nearest hundred, okay? Maybe we don't want to be so exact here. We want to just have the nearest hundred. So round 223 to the nearest hundred. 223 is between 200 and 300. However, it is nearer to 200 than to 300. We can all see that it's very close to 200. 223 is 200 when rounded to the nearest hundred, okay? So once again, we are not rounding to the nearest 10 anymore. We are rounding to the nearest hundred. So it is approximately 200 when rounded to the nearest hundred. Let's keep going. Number five, the volume of milk in a jar is 1,387 milliliters. That is much too exact. Let's round it to the nearest hundred. 1,387 is between 1,300 and 1,400. It is nearer to 1,400, sorry, 1,400 than 1,300. Sorry, boys and girls. Uh, many times in the USA, instead of saying 1,400, we just say 1,400, okay? So if you hear me say 1,400 or 1,300 instead of 1,400 or 1,300. Just know that's what that means. That is the same number. However, the more proper way to say this is 1,400. Okay, so uh, 1,387 is nearer to 1,400. And 1,387 is 1,400 when rounded to the nearest 100 milliliters. So it is approximately 1,400. The volume of milk in a jar is 1,400 milliliters when rounded to the nearest 100 milliliters. Okay. And number six here says the number of people at a concert was 36,450. 36,450 is exactly halfway between uh, 36,400 and 36,500, all right? So what should we do here? So once again, if we have the digit five in the tens place, we will round up. This is a smart boy. All right, so just like uh, with those other fives, uh, when we are rounding to 10, okay, now we have the digit five in the tens place, meaning a 50. Here we have 450, all right? And we will round up again. So 36,450 is 36,500 when rounded to the nearest 100. 36,450 is approximately 36,500. The number of people at the concert was 36,500 when rounded to the nearest Okay, and we do this because it makes things easier for our brain to deal with these numbers with all the nice zeros at the end here. Okay, it will make math problems a lot easier for you. All right, number seven. Sorry, this one's a bit blurry. Round 7,300 to the nearest thousand. Okay, now we want to round to the nearest thousand. All right. 7,300 is between 7,000 and 8,000. It is nearer to 7,000 than to 8,000. So 7,300 is 7,000 when rounded to the nearest thousand, okay? It is approximately 7,000. Number eight, round 5,800 to the nearest thousand, okay? So, uh, 5,800 is between 5,000 and 6,000. It is nearer to 6,000 than to 5,000. Okay, we can see that on our number line here. 5,800 
is 6,000 when rounded to the nearest thousand, okay? It is approximately 6,000. Part nine, a charity raised $19,500 in a donation drive. Wow, that's a lot of money. 19,500 is exactly halfway between uh, 19,000 and 20,000, okay? So once again, we have a five here, uh, and this time it's in the hundred spot. So when a digit, when the digit five is in the hundreds place, we will round up just like we did with the number five and the number 50 when we're dealing with uh, rounding to the nearest 10 or to the nearest hundred. So uh, let's keep going here. 19,500 is 20,000 when rounded to the nearest thousand dollars. All right, it is approximately $20,000. The amount that charity raised is $20,000 when you rounded to the nearest thousand dollars. All right, so uh, don't worry about this too much. I'm going to make you do this in class today. All right, um, just be sure. Um, let's start with 501 here, okay? Represent 501 on a number line, okay? That's easy enough, 501. All right, then we want to round it to the nearest 10, the nearest 100, and the nearest 1,000, okay? So um, 501 is between 500 and 510. And if we're rounding to the nearest 10, the nearest 10 would be 500 here, okay? It's only one step away. All right, now if I'm rounding to the nearest 100, okay, 501 is between, let me change colors here. 501 is between 500 and 600, would be way over here, probably off of the paper, but I'm gonna put it here. All right, so uh, 501 is between 500 and 600. What 100 is it nearer to? Well, obviously, it is very close to 500, and it's 99 steps away from the next 100 at 600. So we would round down to 500, all right? Um, and let's see if we can go to the nearest 1,000, okay? Rounding to the nearest 1,000. So 501 is very near to the exact middle of zero, all right? Our two nearest thousands are just the number zero, and then 1,000 would be way up here somewhere. All right. Sorry, 600, you got bumped for 1,000 here. All right, so, oopsie, this is not letting me add an extra zero here. All right, um, so yes, it is closer to 1,000 here. We have 499 steps to get to the nearest thousand, and we have 501 steps to get all the way back here to zero, okay? So it is closer to 1,000, all right? And then they want you to uh, do the same thing for all of these numbers in part three here, okay? We want to know if we round 725 to the nearest 10, the nearest 100, and the nearest 1,000, what will you get? All right, so just be sure you can do that. We're going to go over that in class today. And let's take a look here. We will also do this in class as well. However, if you're not in class, you might have to use the internet and figure this out by yourself here, okay? Um, we are going to find uh, the nearest, we're going to first find the distance of these cities to Singapore. And I might use Phnom Penh because we are not in Singapore. Uh, so that might be more fun to do it with Phnom Penh. 
However, we are going to find the distance in kilometers, and then we're going to round that distance to the nearest 10, the nearest 100, and the nearest 1,000, okay? And I am happy to help you out with all of that. All right, and then we are going to start rounding these numbers to the nearest 10 and 100 and 1,000 during class, okay? So complete this, make sure you can complete this, and that is it for math today. Um, the last thing I wanted to go over is your homework, which is page number one uh, on your math packet, okay? This is just more number patterns or skip counting that we've already done, okay? So um, hopefully we are getting good at that by now. If you still have trouble and you need some help, make sure you contact me about that. I will be happy to help you. Uh, just message me on Class Dojo. All right, kids, that's all for now. I'll see you at class time. Bye-bye.